Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at Intel, and I'm here with James Reinders. He's an Intel software evangelist at the company. How are you doing, James? I'm doing great. How are you, Rich? Great, great. <laughs> well, you and I talked earlier this week about Studio XE, right? The, yes. the latest version. What's new with that product there? Well, we actually upgraded the name to 2015, getting ready for next year. Yep. Um, you know, it, it's a suite of tools, compilers, libraries, analysis tools that are very popular, uh, especially in HPC, for really squeezing out performance. So for me, the, the uh, uh, coolest features are some of the new things like explicit um, vectorization, uh, the ability to tell the compiler when to use SIMD instructions more explicitly. It's a new style of programming. Uh, and OpenMP 4.0, which includes uh, that type of functionality. Now, of course, we've done all the things to stay ahead of the competition and work very hard to optimize uh, our libraries and our compilation capabilities and keep up with standards, not, not just uh, OpenMP4, but a myriad of other things like uh, MPI3 and Fortran 2003 and C11 and you know, keeping up. But uh, I, the things that really excite me is looking at OpenMP4.0. Um, we've got. Uh, uh, virtually a complete set of uh, 4.0 features. The, only the user-defined reductions are missing right now. And, um, and the exciting thing to me is that OpenMP 4.0 brings together tasking, which it's had f since its start in 97, um, with new capabilities for vectorization and for offload. And bringing those together and being able to do them at the same time is extraordinarily powerful. I love uh, teaching classes about it and seeing what people can do with it. And now it's fully in our products, the support for this. So you can do parallelization and vectorization. So you can take a loop and say, uh, parallelize it across a bunch of cores. But then when you're running on each core, uh, vectorize it there. Uh, and the vectorization capabilities, we, we call them explicit vectorization. Um, and that means that the programmer goes in and says, hey, I." I'm sure that vectorizing this is a good idea, do it. Um, it kind of ends the tradition of the compiler deciding whether vectorization was good or not and you trying to tease it with switches and with hints and this and that. And now this explicit uh, programming uh, seems to work really well for developers. I've seen a lot of uh, coders using this style. We've had it in our compiler for a few years, um, but recently it was added to OpenMP 4.0 uh, and so we support uh, the 4.0 uh, uh, capability fully, uh, and it's very effective. It's really worth looking at if you've um, done this before. And the reason that people are looking at vectorization a lot more now is the vector lengths have gotten so wide. You know, we've, we've, for years we've had SSEs able to do two double precisions or four single precisions at a time, and that's pretty exciting. But now you're talking with AVX 512 about being able to do 16 single precisions at a time or eight double. If you ignore that, you lose a lot of performance, even at an application level. Um, the kernel levels, obviously, you can speed up a lot, maybe up to 16x on single precision. But on the whole application, obviously, it'll be less. But it's gotten significant enough that people are taking a look at it again, and it's the perfect time because yeah. 4 has got this capability. Yeah, you know, when I think about vectorization, I think back to the old Cray days, right, and Fortran, but you're bringing this to like C++ and other uh, more oh, modern. Oh, absolutely, like, yeah, yeah and, the, and the, even the loops in Fortran don't look like they, they used to. The, the good old Livermore loops that we used to vectorize against, there, were, there used to be a small number of them, they were pretty simple. Um, the sort of things people want to vectorize now are much more complex, whether it's in Fortran or C or C++, and uh, uh, we really have this capability. It's quite quite uh, interesting to look at, quite yeah. exciting. Yeah, you know, when we were talking earlier this week, you were saying how the, uh, uh, you now have the ability of these scientists that, to write this parallel code that looks a lot closer to their science. And uh, rather than uh, reworking it to make it go fast in parallel, how, how does it work? Yeah, absolutely. Because usually uh, if you're hand coding it and trying to get the compiler to produce code exactly like your code, you, you want the outermost loop to be parallel, the innermost loop to vectorize. Maybe if there isn't enough work, you, you collapse a couple loops levels together. The next thing you know, you end up with code that doesn't look like what you, the math equations you drew on the chalkboard. Yeah. With OpenMP's 4.0, there's a few capabilities. The ability to say parallelize this, vectorize that, or do them both. 
And then you can use this collapse directive that says, hey, even though I've written it as several loops, I really want you to collapse it into one and think about it as one problem to uh, parallelize and vectorize. And you can give a few parameters. Next thing you know, you've, you've got the code written the, uh, like the science or like the math was on the, on, the, on the blackboard that you were writing it out. And it's much more readable and, and it gets better performance because of the capabilities of the compiler. Well, terrific. So, so is this shipping today? It is. It's shipping today. People can go. Uh, our customers have been downloading the new version uh, like crazy. Uh, and you can also go and get an evaluation copy and check it out if you're not already a customer.